we know or we are told? Don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's uh, go back a little bit here. The president in his speech um, described the pillars on which the 2012 budget were built. said they're built on four pillars, macroeconomics, macroeconomic stability, structural reforms, governance and institutions. And then he said something about continuing with those four pillars in the 2013 budget. Do you think it's viable to continue on that trend? I'm sure you yourself probably don't understand what those pillars are. Uh, it's <laughs> good to say, you know. Uh, but whatever the pillars are, the important thing is that would the proposed structure or reform or whatever bring about growth in the economy? And my answer is no, uh, quite simply no. Apart from the fact that you have uh, this uh, flawed situation, which is going to, you know, uh, 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 how do I say, um, reduce the amount of agricultural output and things like that, uh, uh, possibly for the first few months, uh, uh, for the next few months, and possibly into some part of the uh, 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 of the new year. Um, you 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 find that um, um, the 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 amount of um, um, uh, money we we're talking about is uh, absolutely um, insufficient, inadequate in order to be able to transform our economy because the job of the federal government or the government is not really uh, to create jobs or to create an enabling environment that would make it possible for the private sector to create jobs. So the pillars you're talking about um, uh, may be uh, said to achieve these objectives, but you cannot achieve the, those objectives without addressing the issues of interest rate and inflation. These are the critical aspects, and a lot of people don't seem to understand that. That also affects what the, our cost of borrowing, uh, significantly so, especially when we have a monetary team that is happy to borrow money it doesn't need at up to 12%. Uh, I think we should give them an award for that. You know, um, And we wonder why our debt burden is rising. For example, we, we, we hear from the, we, we read from the uh, budget that the amount of debt accumulation has been uh, gradually reducing and it will reduce further in the, in the, in the 2013 budget. Uh, but interestingly, um, the debt management office itself would probably have created close to a trillion naira in debt at the end of this year. The debt burden has been rising at a rate of about one trillion every year since 2007, when it was be barely uh, 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 below a trillion, that's domestic debt, that is. And so we have a situation where, uh, we, in fact, surprisingly and inexplicably, it, it, has, it, it has become evident that there has been no plan for the redemption of, of any of these debts. And we have what they call a debt management office. That's why often I call it a debt creation office. And they're talking about a uh, 100 billion sinking fund mm -hmm. uh, for this purpose. Um, a sinking fund for uh, debt of five trillion or so thereabouts not to account for that of, of uh, 1.7 trillion, uh, that, that is AMCOM generated debt, even though AMCOM's total debt is quite close to 5 trillion. So I don't see why they should uh, distinguish and say 1.7 uh, trillion is government backed. And the, since AMCOM is a creation of government, so really what I'm saying is we sh should probably be looking at a debt burden of not 5 trillion, possibly of about 10 trillion at the moment, all because of uh, an inappropriate and reckless monetary policy framework that is designed to make us poor when we get rich. And that's rather regrettable. Well, when taking a look at the revenue generation itself, I mean, aside of, aside of the fact that we'll, we have a, an oil benchmark of $75 per barrel and on the total we're expecting about 10, a little over 10 trillion naira. Close, you know, to, budgets, even close to 11. Even though we're spending okay. just about 4.9, about 5 trillion naira of that. Do you think that we could have earned more? I think that's what I explained initially, that, mm -hmm. you know, 10.8 uh, is obviously a very conservative figure because uh, with the performance so far of the customs and exercise service, which I said, hopefully, uh, if they could do 5 trillion, uh, 4, 4, 400 billion uh, uh, by the uh, uh, end of August, September, we could expect that they would do 500 billion or something like that. And there's no reason why they should, that shouldn't be carried over as a performance target for next year. Uh, by the same token, I'm saying that the Federal Inland Revenue Service mm -hmm. um, achieved a total of about four point something trillion, quite close to five trillion, uh, as of September. So there's no reason why we shouldn't expect also that to go to five or six trillion. And that also can be projected into the next year's budget. And there's no reason why not if we're expecting growth. Okay? So those two together constitute already 
close to 6 trillion naira. But we don't seem to be taking cognizance of that in the budget. I don't know why they are not recognizing this. Because as I've said earlier, traditionally, the budget uh, uh, usually comprises 80% crude oil receipts or whatever, and uh, internally. But we now have a situation where internally generated revenue uh, is giving a, a good fight. Are we now saying it's 50-50 or what? You know, but if we now extrapolate and say out of that 10.8 billion, 10.84 uh, trillion, 80% uh, of that is crude oil uh, receipts, then we're saying that total, uh, local, um, internally generated revenue is only about three, th uh, three trillion, uh, which uh, from the facts on the ground uh, do not gel. And consequently, we would have what? A projected deficit when we shouldn't even have a deficit. Uh, indeed, it's a very it's a very curious and bizarre uh, monetary management style that you say, ah, uh, let's have a conservative benchmark, yeah. a crude oil price. And then you, you put on that benchmark, and then you say, oh, we have a, a deficit. But fortuitously, the crude oil benchmark price is often exceeded. So you would expect that you wouldn't need the, the deficit. That doesn't stop the DMO from continuing to borrow. So you have a situation where we really don't have the need for a deficit, yes. but somehow it seems like a policy um, uh, fixation that we must, we must incur debt, which is rather unfortunate and tragic because we, we, I don't see why we should be in, in debt at all, especially when uh, we cannot also see any physical evidence of what some of these monies have been used for. Yeah. A, a, a budget that says, look, we, we, we believe in the people, we are going to do something for the people. You know the budget ratio between, in, in, in Lagos State? It's 40% recurrent expenditure and 60% capital. I mean, that's... Uh, Is it feasible to truly cut it that way? Because you know, hosts of people have made you know, reference to the fact that right now we're doing 68.7% uh, in terms of recurrent and just what's left as capital expenditure and it seems that the federal government is bent on making the gradual adjustment in terms of increasing capital expenditure but I hope people expect that it will be a little more drastic is it, it feasible uh, well put this way um, maybe I should throw a question to you and say do you think that the level of wastage in public expenditure 10% would be appropriate or 20% or 30% or even 50% wastage and corruption in the system if you had the knife, for example, and you had the system, uh, would you be looking at 10% uh, cut in corruption or 10% cut in cont contract wastages and, uh, and this type of thing? We all believe that there's a humongous corruption and wastage level in the system, and we shouldn't be talking of 2% reduction rates and things like that in recurrent expenditure. Uh, the amounts of monies that have been recovered uh, in, in, in various uh, public transactions and, okay. uh, and things like this, you'll find that um, uh, these bonds are often not, uh, not, not reflected in, in, in any budget um, uh, statement.